President Saratali, President Sobotka, Secretary General Gramminger, Excellencies, Distinguished Parliamentarians, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's an honor for me to be here with you today to take a look at the security situation in our region and share with you our priorities and the vision for the OSC in 2019. Slovakia is taking the helm of the OSC with a sense of responsibility and seriousness, but most of all with the utmost sense of urgency. Looking at the current state of international affairs, it is difficult not to feel a certain chill. Situation on the ground in many places in our region is alarming. We are witnessing a series of smaller and bigger crises. Some of them sometimes seem endless. The challenges are big and fundamental. As President just mentioned, some of us just came back from the Munich Security Conference where, despite the sunny weather, you could feel the relations between old partners cooling down. While we cannot tell what the future will bring, and it's never been harder to predict, it is obvious that we will need management tools, old and established, as well as new ones, to prevent a situation when the relations and situations become irreversible. And our chairmanship believes that many of those needed tools are actually here, at the OSCE. So as our number one priority, we want to use and develop the tools OSCE offers to prevent, mitigate and resolve conflicts. How? First, by using practices and mechanisms already in place, such as the structured dialogue and security sector governance and reform. Second, by taking better advantage of opportunities and developing agendas, like gender mainstreaming and greater participation of women in the security fields. I took a look at the participation list today and it seems that we have about 15 women heads of delegations here. And while I'm glad that we have 15 women heads of delegation here, I hope we will see this number rise in the future years. And third, by making full use of the OSC's presence on the ground. OSC field missions are doing a remarkable work. They contribute to easing civilian suffering and put our eyes where we cannot see from Vienna. And this is extremely important, especially as the crisis in and around Ukraine continues to undermine our principles and threatens our security. And it's the civilians paying the highest cost. So I used my visit to Ukraine last month to collect feedback from our monitors and appeal to our Ukrainian partners to actively promote a lasting ceasefire. I followed up with a visit to Moscow just this past Tuesday and I conveyed the same messages in support of dialogue to our Russian partners. I will actively continue leading the dialogue in Vienna, in capitals and on the ground where OSC is present. I have already traveled to Moldova where we want to keep the positive momentum in the Transnistrian settlement process. The sides need to continue their constructive interaction and avoid unilateral moves that could hinder settlement process. Last week in Georgia, I had an opportunity to see the situation on the administrative boundary line between Tbilisi and Schinvali. Slovak chairmanship will fully back existing formats for conflict resolution. We welcome that the incident prevention and response mechanism meetings in Ergneti is back on track. Our team further plans for my visits to Armenia, Azerbaijan, the countries of Central Asia and the Balkans in the upcoming weeks and months so we can talk about challenges we are facing right on the spot. But we cannot limit our discussions to 2019 optics. The world is rapidly changing, new threats are emerging and we cannot let them catch us unprepared. So as our second priority, we will focus on providing for a safer future. For our institutions to remain relevant, we must prepare them for what's to come. The drafters of the Helsinki Act could hardly predict that decades later we would talk about the climate change or cyber warfare. New technologies and tools of statecraft, new interdependencies, new vulnerabilities are emerging. And this also means we will most likely need new tools 
in order to manage them. We need to adapt, open up space for new themes within the OSCE, and generate dialogue about a safer future. To this end, our chairmanship will host topical conferences dealing with issues from terrorism to cybersecurity, to call attention to worrying trends and look for opportunities for cooperation. The first conference of this type already took place, 5th and 6th of February in Bratislava, addressing problems of combating modern-day anti-Semitism. However, to prepare respons responsibly for modern opportunities and threats, first and foremost, we must band together. So as our third chairmanship priority, we want to promote multilateralism. We need allies. We need complementarity. And to this end, first, we need strategic partnerships with international organizations. All the members of the European Union are also members of the OSCE. We are all members of the United Nations. And we want to see how we can better harmonize and support mutual efforts. To this end, I will visit Council of Europe next week and engage with the United Nations Security Council in March. Second, we need to connect with non-governmental actors, think tanks, women's groups, youth networks, and other civil society partners. But let us start within the OSC family by better using existing channels for dialogue and ensuring inclusivity. Out of the OSC structures, parliamentary assembly brings the most plurality and diversity. Your input and action is critical to our collective success. Let me just mention three areas where, as I see it, we need the perspective and skills of parliamentarians the most. First, you are the link between the OSC and the people it serves. You come from all parts of our region, representing constituents from mega cities to small towns, from agglomerations to countryside. You know how things work on the ground. You know best what concerns your people. You represent. You are the body best suited to ensure that the OSC is responsive to the aspirations of its citizens. You can bring their voices to this room and ensure our focus stays on people. But the organization also needs you to work the other way around, not only to bring cl people closer to the OSC, but also to bring OSC closer to its people, to convey our message and work to ex explain why it matters. You are in an opportune position to connect our organization with local political authorities, communities, neighborhoods, civil society, people on the ground. With that, you are playing a vital part in turning our regional obligations into national and local realities. Second, your engagement in election observation is crucial. In the past 25 years, over 6,000 parliamentarians and staff observed more than 170 different elections. Your presence adds credibility and international visibility to the electoral process. And I want to stress the importance of the OSC election observations as a flagship in consolidating democracy in the OSC region. For the OSC, election observation is a common endeavor involving the Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights, the OSC Parliamentary Assembly, and other parliamentary institutions. Your presence adds elected authority and international visibility to these common election observation endeavors. And especially at the time when we are heading towards numerous elections of critical importance. Moldova's parliamentary elections are the most important ballot in the modern history of the country. The conduct of these elections has potential to determine the light in which the international community will see Moldova. Also, importance of the upcoming presidential elections in Ukraine does not need any further emphasis. Our chairmanship will, of course, play its part. I will designate a special coordinator to lead the short-term OSC observer missions, as I did for Moldova, designating you, Mr. President. And I want to emphasize one more thing here. 
we all have high expectations from the OSCE. But the election monitoring does not come free of charge. And its proper conduct is seriously endangered if we do not put the organization back on a sound financial footing. OSCE is worth an investment. Cooperative security is worth an investment. After all, last year's unified OSC budget did not exceed the price of one average modern jet fighter. Lastly, I want to highlight how Parliamentary Assembly informs and inspires the work of our organization. Difficult times require creativity and innovation in responses, and we live in difficult times. We need new approaches and original proposals, and so far the Parliamentary Assembly has proven to be an excellent source of inspiration. Our focus on issues like trafficking in persons and combating intolerance is rooted in initiatives originally undertaken by this, this Assembly. You have also been a key factor in the efforts to reform and modernize the OSCE, such as through the Corfu process and the Helsinki Plus 40 initiative. And it was the recommendation of this Assembly that led to creating the post of the representative on freedom of the media to provide expertise in promoting media pluralism and safety of journalists. We highly appreciate his activities, as vibrant and free press is critical to sustaining the rule of law. And I want to emphasize this, and I want to emphasize this especially on this day. It is precisely one year since our society was left in shock after the murder of investigative journalist Jan Kuciak and his fiance Martina Kushnirova. Our thoughts go out to their families and loved ones. We continue to strongly condemn this crime and place faith in the authorities to bring perpetrators to justice. Ladies and gentlemen, the major challenges facing the OSC region today and indeed the wider world demand more cooperation and more dialogue than ever before. Any argument about going alone is fundamentally flawed. In promoting multilateralism, cooperation, and fundamental principles the OSC stands on, parliamentary diplomacy can be a powerful tool. And so, my final message today is, we all need to assume our responsibility. We all need to use the tools in our disposal to make sure that the freezing environment in the OSC area gets some sunshine after all. I thank you for your attention.